But it became clear to us that what people really wanted was for us to bring those capabilities and more together. People wanted a unified agent that could go off, use its own computer, and do real complex tasks for them that could uh, seamlessly transition from thinking about something to taking actions to using lots of tools, using the terminal, clicking around the web, even producing things like spreadsheets and slides and, and much more. So OpenAI just introduced ChatGPT Agent, a unified AI system that can browse the web like operator, conduct in-depth research like deep research, generate spreadsheets, images, connect to third-party data, and a ton more. This thing is literally an all-in-one AI assistant. And as Sam Altman puts it, it's a glimpse into the future. So instead of just explaining it myself, here is Isa Fulford, an OpenAI researcher who will be walking us through exactly how it works. Check this out. So as mentioned, we gave the agent access to its own virtual computer. And the computer has many different tools installed and it can choose which to use as it's working through the task. So in ChatGPT, you can see a visualization of the agent's computer screen. And you can see overlaid its chain of thought in text, and that's what it's thinking as it's working through the task and deciding what to do next. We gave the agent access to two different ways to browse the internet. First, we gave it a text browser, and this is similar to the deep research tool. And this is what lets it really efficiently and quickly read many web pages um, um, and search for them. And we also gave it access to a visual browser, and this is similar to the operator tool. And this is what lets it actually interact with the UI of a web page. So it can um, drag things, it can use the cursor to click around, it can open UI components, it can fill out forms and enter text in text areas. It's very flexible. So those two tools are very complementary. And then we also gave it access to its own terminal so that it can run code and it, and it can also generate and analyze files like slide decks and spreadsheets. And then through the terminal, it's also able to call APIs. So both public APIs and APIs to access your private data sources like Google Drive, Google Calendar, GitHub, SharePoint, and many others. Um, and only if you explicitly connect them, similar to Deep Research Connectors. And then it also has access to the ImageGen API, so it can create nice visuals for um, slide decks and other things as it's working through its tasks. So right off the bat, this thing is pretty insane. I mean, it's literally just a combination of all the agents OpenAI has already released, like Operator, Deep Research, and so on. But again, unified into one model that can also decide which tools to use on its own. It's almost like an AI agent that has access to ChatGPT itself. Now, what's cool is that you can actually see what it's doing as it works, and even step in if needed. At the beginning of the live stream, they attach a wedding invitation and ask the agent to plan their trip. This was a wedding out of town, so they needed a hotel room, a suit, and a gift. And it's as simple as sliding through the agent's progress bar, like a YouTube video, to watch exactly what it's doing. Now, they do admit that these tasks can take some time, especially the more complex ones. So in this next clip, they really highlight the ability to intervene since, well, it can be kind of slow. Take a look. Oh yeah, I also need a pair of shoes because my shoes got damaged. How did they get damaged? Uh, by the rain. In SF? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Cool, all right. Uh, well, let's get Edward a pair of shoes as well. So, oh, can you also find us a um, pair of men's dress black shoes in size? 9.5. 9.5. So one of the key capabilities of the model is being able to interrupt. I think, you know, as trajectories take long time or whatever time, it's really important for us to, for it to feel very multi-turned so the users can interject, user can direct it, user can give it more guidance, less guidance, whatever we want to do. And that's what we're doing here. We essentially, the, the model was chugging along, figuring out all the things that we had asked before. And in this case, we essentially said, hey, can you also uh, get us a pair of, men's black shoes, and now it's thinking, and soon enough, hopefully, it'll take that into account and keep going uh, into its trajectory. There we go. So it said, acknowledge the interruption. It said, okay, cool. I'll also research men's black shoes in size 9.5, um, and then it'll probably get on its way. Um, but maybe Isa can tell us a little bit more about how that works. Yeah, sure. So as you can see, the agent is very collaborative, and this was really important to us when we were training the model and building the product. If you were asking another person to do a task for you that would take them a really long time to complete, you'd probably give them some instructions to start, and then they might ask you some clarifying questions. 
And then they'd start the task and maybe realize, oh, they need more clarification from you or they need your permission to sign into something or do something on your behalf. And then you might realize, oh, I forgot to mention this thing or um, what's your status? How are you doing? Can I help redirect you if you're getting along the wrong path or something? And so similarly for these really long running agentic tasks, it's very important that both the user and the agent are able to initiate communication with each other so that um, the agent is able to most effectively help you with your tasks. And so this is something that we actually trained into the model. We trained it to be able to ask clarifying questions, not every single time like deep research. Um, we also <laughs> asked it, uh, we also trained it to be interruptible as Yash just showed. And also sometimes it will ask you for clarification and confirmation mid trajectory. So yeah, keep in mind, this is still an early research preview. And so it's gonna make mistakes. It's gonna be slow and it probably won't work the way you want it to every time. But clearly, they're building this with the intention of turning ChatGPT from a chatbot into a truly autonomous AI system. One that can handle entire workflows without you ever lifting a finger. We're still likely a long ways away from this, but probably not as long as you'd think. Now, this was probably the craziest part of the live stream. To show off the agent's benchmark performance, they had it pull data from Google Drive, and then use that data to create a slide deck showing its own benchmark results. I honestly don't think this has ever been done before. Check this out. So um, I think people would love to know how good the model is. Yes. So this is a prompt we previously gave the agents yesterday. So basically it asks the model to pull its own evaluation number from our Google Drive connector and make some slides. So we want to keep it simple, like no introduction, no conclusion just present the results in the charts. As you can see, now the model is connecting to the Google Drive API, and uh, then search within API. It, right now, it looks like the first result is very relevant. So it's reading the first result. Now it's reading the first result uh, in details. Uh, let's accelerate this uh, replay. <laughs> so then the model might read from the results again and write some code. So here, you can see that the model is using the image generation model called the image generation tool to generate some decorations for the slides. And let's see what the first slide the model made. So here, the model is writing some code that will be compiled to be the final slides. So this is the first slide the model make in this demo, which looks OK, but it's not polished enough. One of the key features in reinforcement learning is that the model will review, review its own results and refine the results to, de to deliver a good final results. Let's see what's the, finally what the model gave us. We can click skip, and then the model gave us a good uh, PowerPoint file. So it's a real PowerPoint that you can download and open it in any software. So you get the idea. This is again, an all-in-one agent that can truly handle multi-step tasks, unlike anything I've seen before. If we look at the benchmarks briefly, you can see it's scoring around 42% on humanity's last exam, which is quite impressive. Not as good as Grok 4, but still much better than anything else. It's also scoring around 27% on Frontier Math, one of the hardest math benchmarks ever created. And if we go over to the next slide, you can see it's state of the art on Web Arena and Browse Comp, more agentic based benchmarks, which is not exactly surprising. But in the final slide, you can see the agent is also performing exceptionally well on real world usage benchmarks, like Spreadsheet Bench or the internal banking benchmark. So overall, this is a pretty massive release from OpenAI. And again, it kind of feels like a glimpse of what's coming. AI systems that don't just help you get work done, but that actually do the work for you. Also, as this new ChatGPT agent rolls out to Pless, Pro, and team users starting as early as today, OpenAI made sure to issue a warning for anyone planning to use it. Take a look. Um, as Edward said, um, we think we've trained a very powerful model. And a lot of the power comes from its ability to browse the internet. And as we know, the internet can be a scary place. There are all sorts of hackers trying to steal your information, scams, uh, phishing attempts. Um, and Agent isn't immune to all these things. Um, one particular thing we're worried about is a new uh, attack called prompt injections. 
This is where, let's say, you ask agent to buy you a book, and you give it your credit card information to do that. Agent might stumble upon a malicious website that asks it, oh, enter your credit card information here. It'll help you with your task. An agent, which is trained to be helpful, might decide that's a good idea. We've done a lot of work to try to ensure that this doesn't happen. We've trained our model to ignore suspicious instructions on, on suspicious websites. We've also have, uh, we also have layers of monitors that kind of peer over the agent's shoulder and watch it as it's going um, and stop the trajectory if anything looks suspicious. We can even update these in real time if new attacks are found in the wild. That said, though, you know, this is a cutting edge product. This is a new surface, and we can't stop everything. And so that's why I feel it's very important for the audience to be aware of the risks involved in using Agent. And um, we encourage users to be proactive in kind of thinking about how they share their information. You know, if it's highly sensitive information, maybe don't share that. Um, maybe um, uh, use our features like takeover mode to directly input your credit card information into the browser instead of um, giving it to Agent. Um, we feel like we've built a very powerful product, but again, it's important for our users to understand the risks involved. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this new ChatGPT agent. Personally, I'm super excited to try it out once I get access. I want to see if it's actually as slow as people are saying it is, because I've definitely been seeing a lot of complaints about that on X. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll leave you with this last clip where they go over the agent's response to that wedding planning prompt we saw earlier, which, by the way, took basically the entire live stream. So that's all for me today. I apologize for my voice. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. But thanks for watching, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Let's check on the wedding. Okay, great. Looks like it just finished in the nick of time. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So in this case, as we said, we were looking for hotels, dress, uh, suits, and also shoes. So it's come out with a pretty comprehensive report, it looks like. Wedding venue, date, when it is, with the Zilla links, dress codes. It figured out like what the suit recommendation should be, where you can buy. Now I can go ahead and buy myself, or I can ask the agent to go and buy for me. Um, also figured out footwear, hotel options. It actually looked through all the, oh, sorry. It looked through all the availability. You can see, actually, it gives screenshots of what it checked. In this case, we use booking.com, and it's able to do that. Also has gift suggestions, et cetera, and next step. I can ask it. As you said, the agent says, hey, if you need assistance purchasing any item or have any further adjustments, let me know so we can do that. Uh, and I want to show one last demo, which we didn't really run live, but I think it's really cool. And especially because the folks who are getting married re are really into MLB. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> we asked the agent uh, to go and build an optimal itinerary for visiting all 30 MLB stadiums, in, just in case you're thinking of a sabbatical, uh, and then design the optimal route, prioritize Hello Kitty Nights and whatnot, <laughs> and present a final plan as a detailed spreadsheet. I'll really quickly run through this. Um, I think it's just so fun to see. So again, like as we have thrown, uh, shown throughout the, uh, the live stream, it uses a multitude of tools, uses container, the terminal, uses using the browser, working through all the details. It'll probably use, again, back to the browser, figuring out Hello Kitty Nights, and then sports stadium and whatnot. Let's see, did I miss the, oh, there you go. Map, building a map, using code to actually build it out. And then overall, we get like a pretty solid result, I think. At the end, it takes 25 minutes to work. Where does the season start and whatnot? You have a spreadsheet that you can quickly view inside, just right inside ChatGPT. You can map the journey, cool looking map, I guess. And mm -hmm. that's it. So this is ChatGPT agent. We hope you really like it. And over to Sam. Amazing work, all of you and, and to your teams. This is, I think, uh, really something that's going to help people get work done uh, and have more time to do the things they want to do. Um, I think it's, it's really amazing how much you've brought together to deliver this experience and watching the agent sort of use the internet, make these spreadsheets, make PowerPoints, whatever else, uh, and do all this work is, is quite amazing. We're going live today for Pro, Plus, and Team users. Pro users will get uh, 400 queries a month, Plus and Team users will get 40 a month. Uh, the rollout should be finished by the end of the day for Pro and very soon for Plus and Team users. 
will try to be live for Enterprise and EDU by the end of this month. As Casey mentioned, although this is an extremely exciting new technology, there are new risks. Uh, people learned how to use the internet generally pretty safely, uh, although of course there are still scammers and other attacks. People are going to need to learn to use AI agents, uh, and society is going to need to learn to build up defenses against attacks on AI agents as well. So we're starting with a very robust system, lots of warnings. We will relax that over time as people get more comfortable with it, but we do want people to treat this as a new technology and a new risk surface and use all of the caution that Casey talked about. Um, but that said, we hope you'll love it. Uh, this is still very early. We will improve it rapidly, and we're excited to see where it all goes. So congrats again. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy.